Yes, you are. I am? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Good. Because uh, always right? with, uh, with a black background, unconventional. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a talk in place by Objective PWT Transforms um, and uh, Dominic, the floor is yours. Thank you. So this is joint work with uh, Daiki Hashimoto, Diptorama and Ayumi Shinohara. So the talk is about PWT, which means um, Boros Villa Transform. So and not only on the Boris Villa transform, but also on the bijective variant, the bijective BWT, or shortly BBWT. So what is the BWT? We have briefly seen that yesterday, just a brief reminder, because I want to also introduce the BBWT, which we have not. Given our text, we append a dollar sign, which is smaller than all other characters, and it's unique. We take all suffixes, take the preceding character of each suffix and sort, uh, align the suffixes to the left and then sort these suffixes with respect to the lexicographic order. And during the sorting, we take along these blue characters. And if we read now from top to bottom, these characters, we get the, B -B uh, the BWT. Now, what is the BWT? This is the BWT of the Linden factorization with respect to the omega order. So there are two things I want to explain, namely the Linden factorization and second, the omega order. Now for the Linden factorization, we need to know what Linden words are. So for instance, A and AA, BAB are Linden words because a Linden word is smaller than every proper suffix or equivalently, its lexicographic is smaller than every rotation. What are not Linden words? Counter examples are ABA, AAB, because AAB, AB, like this one above, is a Linden word and it's a rotation of this one. AB, AB is not a Linden word because the suffix AB is smaller than AB, AB. Okay, now we have some Linden words. What can we do with them? We can do a so-called Linden factorization thanks to Chen and others, so known as the Chen Fox Linden theorem. What it states is that given a text T, we can factorize this text into these factors where each factor is a Linden word. And we have the property that the list of these Linden words is not is, is non-lexicographically increasing. So we have this property. And the factorization is unique, and you can actually compute it at linear time thanks to Devel. So for our example, we do the Linden factorization, and we see that all these factors are Linden words, and we have this property of the non-increasing order. Now, next thing is that we have to look at is the omega order. We define the omega order for two strings, u and w, such that u is smaller with respect to the omega order. If its unique, uh, its infinite concatenation is lexicographically smaller than the infinite con concatenation of w. So for instance, ab is smaller than aba in the lexicographic order, but it's contrary in the omega order. And to see that, we take the infinite concatenations and see that already at the fourth character we have a mismatch and we see that ABA is accordingly smaller than AB. And with that we have all ingredients for the BBWT. We first compute the Linton factorization of our input text and then we take all conjugates of each Linton word, so it's just the cyclic shifts, put them into a list and sort this list with respect to the omega order. Now we have this list here and what we now take is the last character of each element of this list and reading it from top to bottom gives us the BBWT. If we compare that with the standard BWT, can see that 
not only this, there is a dollar, but also the shape differs in that you have three Bs and three As, and here you don't find this kind of shape. So what are the merits of the BBWT? The first is, of course, there is no dollar. And the second is that Scott and Gill found out that it's more compressible than the BWT for various inputs. Recently, we got the BWT indexable, like the BWT the full text index, and it's computable in linear time with linear number of words. But this number of words could be too much if n is large, and therefore we look at in place variants. So in our setting, we have an alphabet sigma, and small sigma is the alphabet size. Then T is our text with N its length, and we work in the comparison model. And our aim is to propose in place computations transforming T to BWT or to BBWT with a working space of the text plus order of log N bits. So the text is already included in this N log sigma bits. So known solutions are from Crushmore and others working on transformations between text and BWT, where they can construct a BWT in quadratic time. But for restoring the text, they have a penalty of additionally n epsilon factor, n to the power of epsilon. There is another algorithm for computing the BBWT, which we can make in place. And that's why we added it here. So the landscape of known algorithms look like this, where we have on the left part hand um, these known algorithms for the BWT, and we find counter equivalents for the BBWT working in precisely the same times for constructing or restoring the text. And we give a connection between the BWT and BBWT with conversion algorithms, both sites running in n to the power of 2 plus epsilon time. To understand these time bounds, we look at our tools and we use a forward search step and a backward search step. So briefly, what is the forward search step? Uh, the aim is to go forward, which means going now, wrap, now wrapping around to the first character, which we do by going left and then selecting the search it's a third B in F, so we select the third B in L. And we do that again, going to the left, and then downwards, it's the third A, so it's the third A, and so on. So we just hop from, from one character to the next one. And actually, we can compute or formulate that with rank and select queries on F and L. And to symbolize that, we just write down here the ranks for F and L. And this gives us this formula. For the opposite way, we can also do a backward search, going back from C back to dollar. And the thing is, we just flip the arrows around. So first, we, when we're at C, what we do is we select the first C and F, and then go to the right. And then select the third A and F, and go to the right, and so on. And if we look again on uh, how we can construct the LF mapping with respect to select and rank queries, we get precisely the same, but we just flip the roles of F and L. And you can see now here that because this rank shape, uh, the ranks of F have a particular shape and that it's partitioned by the characters. So basically you don't, need to use the select, but you can just select the first character, like for the third A, you can just select the first A and just add two. And therefore you get this shape here, or you can even go to the dollar, so all characters smaller than A, which gives you the cardinality of this set, and then you add the rank, which is for this A3, so you go to the dollar and add three. So if you think about the time complexity, how much time it takes for computing the LF mapping, if you only have to store 
L, then okay, you can choose any entry of L and it costs you constant time. So you can compute the rank of your any character in linear time. And therefore you can compute this cardinality also in linear time. And this gives you that the LF mapping can be computed in linear time. The contrary for FL, we have not found any solution that works in linear time because you have this FI in your formula and you can write it differently, but you cannot remove it. So if you know the FI entry, so the, the i entry of F, then you can compute it in linear time. But this is actually the i's smallest character in your text. So it's kind of a selection. And for computing this selection query, the, the best known in place algorithm for that takes n to the power of one plus epsilon time, where again, this epsilon is the same epsilon as previously. So what I want to focus on, um, our roadmap is that I first want to show you an algorithm computing the BBWT from the text and then from the BWT. And we start with the text one where we use the previous algorithm from Bonomo and others. The idea is that we use the Linton factorization again. So we first factorize the text and we process each factor individually. So we process the first one and because it's just a B, we just invert the B. But now the question is, how get, can we get the final shape? So this is the final BBWT. And it's pretty easy because what you do is that you take the next Linton factor, this is a C, then you take the last character, which is a C, you prepend it to the BWT. And now this is this, this character and it's just highlighted in blue. What you do now is that you do a backward search. So you search actually one step previously and search for the A. But the A is actually not there because you haven't inserted it yet. But what you do is that you search it and then you insert, insert it at this position where you would expect it. This is precisely at um, the backward search. So you search for C1 and then you add it below. So you add the A below and you keep a pointer at the last inserted position. So for instance, uh, for ABB, you insert the B, the last character in the first position, then do a backward search. This gives uh, you the second position. So you insert it in search one. Then again, backward search, second B gives you this B here. And it's the third entry. So after the third entry, you add the last character, uh, the first character of your Linton factor. So you can do that in place. So you have a cursor here and the cursor goes from left to right and it um, divides your already computed PWT and the rest of the text. So in the first part, we have just the letter P and you're done. And the cursor jumps to the next Linton boundary. So the boundary of the next Linton uh, factor, which is this part here. And now I symbolize with red characters, uh, red, red color, the characters that are invalid and with green, the ones that are already part in the BBWT. So what you do now is a merge, like previously, you merge them to get this one, you move again the cursor and merge and you get this one and then you're done. For this merge step, how it works, we look at this example. So it's again this string here. And what you do is that you again take the last character and just move it to the front. And now you compute the number of characters smaller than this character, which we denote by CB, which is just this cardinality of the set, which we previously defined, plus the rank of B. So th this one is one because there is a one, uh, there is an A, and this is the first. B, so it's uh, the second position. So after the second position, we move the last character and we move it down there. Now we are at the third position. Do again uh, the calculation. The C is the same because it's still just one A, but now it's the second B. So we get the third position. 
So invert after the third position, and we get this shape. Good. So this concludes the first part. And for the second part, we think about how to get from the BWT to the BBWT. The idea is that we want to work in place. And I mentioned previously this algorithm from Duval. What it does, it computes the Linton factorization and it runs in n times tl time, where tl is the time for accessing an entry of t. And it scans linearly from ti to ti plus one, where i is just increasing variable. Now, why is this tl important? Because we don't apply it on the text, but on the BWT. So the BWT now simulates the text. And the simulation works with the FL mapping because the FL mapping scans linearly forward. And in our case, this TL has time complexity n to the power of one plus epsilon, if you remember the previous slides, if you just store the BWT. So we have the text and we have here the BWT. So the text is not stored. We, we don't know the text, well, but we can kind of find out how it looks like by just using the FL mapping. So we start at the dollar and we do the FL mapping just to figure out here that Duval can find the first Linton factor. So we just find the first Linton factor here. We, we know where the border is. And now what we want to do is that we want to compute from this part here, the BBWT. So we just want to have now in this BWT, the BBWT of B. And what we do is that we um, want to create a cycle. So whenever we do a LF mapping on this character, it gives again the same character. So we cannot leave this Luton factor anymore. And the idea is that we swap or we exchange the dollar with this character corresponding to the first character of your text. This could work and it could be a solution in most problems, but here I want, of course, to focus on the hard part where it messes up the BWT. And to see that, we have here um, the ranks after the exchange. And you can see that because we exchanged the B and the dollar, the ranks of the Bs between um, the exchanged values changes. So I had previously these white arrows for the LF mapping, but now they get changed to these red ones. And the idea is now to change somehow the L such that these red arrows get corrected. So what our idea is, is that after the change, where, so where, where we changed, we do a swapping and we swap these elements and exactly as many as we have Bs here with these red arrows. So basically the number of red arrows is the number of swaps. What this does visually, um, it moves the values downwards or upwards. So you, you have this kind of parallelogram shape to move them in the correct position or to get it in a more abstract way. You have your Linton factorization. Now this is the first Linton factor and this is the second one. And let's say it starts with E and ends with X, uh, with E and the second one starts with X. Then because of the property of the Linton factorization, namely that it's uh, non-increasing in lexicographic order, you know that the first, the suffix starting with the first Linton factor is lexicographically larger than the suffix starting with the second 
gluten factor. And this means for the BWT, the shape of the BWT, if you look at the dollar, after the dollar, what is the context of it? It's exactly the suffix starting at the first position. And the context of the E is exactly um, this suffix starting at the starting position of the second gluten factor. And because this one is smaller, so the context of E is smaller than the context of dollar, you always have this shape here. And you have down there this E and this E maps above. So you have this kind of relation. And because of the uh, FL mapping, you know that if you, you, you take the FL mapping from dollar, you get the B, which is the first character of your first Luton factor. And from E, you get to the X. So you jump from this Luton factor to the next one. But actually what you want to do is you want to remap that this E bends down again to the beginning and you want that the dollar maps to the X. And therefore we exchange the E and the dollar, okay? And by doing that, we need to keep track of all these E's that are in between this X changing because their LF mapping changes. So if we swapped, then we get the property what we wanted to have that here we can just wrap around and we can actually forget about the BWT part covering these characters because you're now in, in that same. Whenever you do a, um, a FL mapping, then you just wrap around and you're fine. And here we, you never do, can do a FL mapping and, and pop into the factor T1. So what's left is that you need to do something about these E's that are be in between. And you know where this E was? So this E was the first E um, that mapped above, but you exchange it downwards. So this one maps to something else. And you count the number of other, the other E's that are between. And now you do just down there a swapping. And the swapping is the number of E's that you had found up there. And this just works. If you don't get the idea in detail, I have a slightly easier example. Um, so think, think about we have already done it. So you have now the B and you can see that you have a cycle. So the B5 maps to the B5 and you can never escape it. So it's left for the remaining part. And for that, you know where the dollar is. So you do again the um, FL mapping and you come up to this T, so you have found AC and you want now to swap C and dollar and you swap it and you're fine because there are no characters between C and dollar. So it cannot happen that you get this kind of ugly red arrows that you have to change and you can just continue. So this already concludes my talk. The open problems are, can we get rid of this FL mapping because it needs n to the power of one plus epsilon time. And so just use the LF mapping because it just needs linear time. Second is freshman others have a trade-off algorithm for the BWT computation. Can we use that for the BBWT? And the last one is whether the number of distinct Linton words of T is bounded by the runs in the BBWT of T. If this is the case, then for R, which is the number of runs in the BBWT, if this is asymptotically smaller than N, we can get a uh, run length compressed BBWT index in order of R words. And to get summary picture, I've chosen again this one. For getting the idea about this cyan colored lines or errors, you can look in the paper how we did that. 
So that's all. Thanks for listening and any questions are welcome. Thank you, Dominic. Um...